Right, so we're going to do a video about a rocket stove project that Dante and I did as a school project. How long ago was that? Uh, it was probably like 10 years ago. Maybe not quite that long. I think you were in kindergarten, so oh, that would make eight it years. Eight, eight years ago. Eight years ago. So it was a fun science project and you did a report on it. And how does it work? So it's actually pretty simple. You just, you just put your pan here and, and you put in all your meat. And then this is the real cool part. You can put in any wood, like from, uh, pine, from pine cones to just sticks. Anything that can fit in there, you just light it and it'll work as fuel. Yeah, and it doesn't use a lot of wood. So that's the best part about a rocket stove, is it doesn't use a lot of wood. So uh, you can cook your food using just scraps of wood or anything you can scavenge, or, uh, and it doesn't use a lot of wood. So we're going to show how to build it. This is just one particular design of a rocket stove. Uh, you can make rocket stoves out of anything. This is real simple. It's just bricks uh, that, can, that are stacked up, no mortar or anything. And so in just a second here, Dante is going to show you how to build it. He's going to tear it down and then build it and show just how simple it is to build rocket stoves. So maybe your kids want to do a, a science project or a school project. Uh, this might be an idea. Why can't you move that fast when you're doing your chores? Here we have the rocket stove that uh, Dante just built. Uh, it's tore down and put back together. Uh, you can see a close-up view of it right now. And there's one more piece that is missing from the rocket stove, and that is a grate to go on top. So here, what we have is an old uh, great from a grill from a uh, fire pit that we don't use anymore and the reason that you need this is you need you want to get the pan up off of the brick surface you can set it right on top of the bricks uh, but then you get lo very localized heating right here where the opening is and so the food that's right there cooks real well but off to the side, the par portion of the pan that's sitting on the bricks will eventually heat, but does not heat very well. So you want to have something to get the pan up off of the bricks. That way the flames can come out and heat that pan evenly. Uh, you can. This is what we're using. You can use uh, a couple of pieces of rebar that you scavenge. If you want to get real fancy, you can get a grate from a, a gas stove and put that on top. And it looks like an actual burner and you just put your pan on so uh, right now what we're going to do is we're going to load this up with wood and we're going to put some wood in the front and some wood in the center and we're going to light it and we're going to cook some some sausage kind of loaded up and now we're ready to light it so we're going to have uh, Dante light it all right hold on let me just get the lighter I can't believe it. I'm actually allowed to play with fire. Dante, you were actually allowed to play with fire. It's okay. Yep, we got a fire. We got a flame. Now we're gonna put the pan on it. And what's great about it is, even wait, we might have said in a couple minutes. In actuality, to get it to where the the flames are like coming out the top. Only takes about what 30 seconds yeah. at most. Maybe a minute at the most. Yeah, one of the downsides of a rocket stove or any really any wood burning stove for cooking is obviously the operator is the thermostat. So you can't just set it on medium heat and just trust that it's going to stay there. It, the more fuel you put on and the, the higher the flame will go. You actually get it too hot you may even need to remove some of the wood so it uh, very much depends on the operator to keep it at a steady heat so you you have to you have to stay here and monitor it so i know you could basically use any type of wood for a rocket stove that's one of the main upsides mm -hmm. 
but there's an exception to any to every rule. So, is there any type of wood or fuel that you should avoid with a rocket stove? Like, is there any type of wood that's just too slow burning or smells bad or is too wet? Is there any well, wood? wet wood, yeah. If wood's wet, it won't burn well, but that goes for any wood stoves. There's some that smell bad here in Arizona. I think it's Palo Verde. Um, you burn it, it doesn't smell good. Very oily woods, like olive trees, don't burn well. Um, I've heard, I've never tried them, but uh, uh, in Maybe general, you could. any any wood that you're going to get um, scavenged, you know, when your neighbors trim their trees, if they have pine trees or mesquite or anything like that, it's going to burn real well. So it looks like we're close enough now we can actually put some food on there and what we got is some breakfast sausage that we're going to cook. Bre breakfast, we got some breakfast sausage. Breakfast sausage for dinner. What a world we live in. Breakfast sausage for dinner and this is all this is homemade and a very simple recipe. I'll put a the recipe in the in the description below uh, but it's real simple just four ingredients ground pork, uh, sage, salt, and pepper or seasoned and, and maple syrup and uh, seasoning, of course, is to taste. You can start with a recipe, but you can obviously adjust it uh, to your taste. And when you start with really good ingredients, you get a really good result. So we use um, as fresh as possible spices, uh, salt and fresh ground pepper, um, real maple syrup, not maple flavored corn syrup. And our pork we get is pastured pork. It comes from a, a ranch called Date Creek Ranch here in Arizona, so it's local. It's uh, within a few hours of our home uh, here in the Phoenix area. And uh, no affiliation with Date Creek Ranch. We get no, we're not sponsored by them or anything. We've just been a customer of theirs for about 15 years. And they are a, a local to Arizona supplier, direct, direct to consumer, uh, grass-fed beef, pastured pork, grass-fed lamb, also pastured chicken. They also have uh, free range eggs and no hormones, no antibiotics, uh, just directly from pasture to our freezer. Uh, so when you start with really good ingredients, you get a really good result. So let's go ahead and throw this in here. I'll put a link in the description below to their to their website now obviously, to check them out. That obviously only works in Arizona. If you live in Alaska, then you probably don't have Day Creek Ranch up there. But so just try to look up uh, local grass grass-fed beef or grass-fed pork, uh, you usually can find some results if you if you search for it. It always tastes better grass-fed and local. All right. So that is absolutely right, and you can taste the difference. So we're going to cover that up, and we're going to let that cook for a little bit. It takes about the same amount of time on the rocket stove as it would cooking on your stove in your kitchen. So in a few minutes, we'll have that done. So it's been on there for a few minutes. We didn't time it. We're just going to check it periodically. So I'm going to take this off, see how it's going. Oh yeah, nice. So it's really, really the uh, short amount of time is a true testament to how quickly it is. This stove really burnt. Like, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but already, it's only been on there for probably uh, five, ten minutes, and already a lot of it is even smoked up. So, uh, as long as you just are paying attention to it, it takes maybe half an hour at most to assemble it, and then get your, you assemble all of your patties that you want, and then turn it on, and then you, and then serve it for yourself. Oh, that whole process probably takes half an hour. So the rocket stove is definitely a super quick way to cook your food if you're in a rush or you just want that authentic taste, I guess. So we're gonna check them again. It's been a few more minutes. Oh. And they're coming along real nice. So obviously the ones that are more directly over the heat are cooking faster, so it's now they're kind of a little, a little bit of a downside to but the rocket stove. But it, that is why the grate is there, to try and 
negate that. Yeah, so the, gr the grate is there and it, they're cooking a lot more evenly, but it does it does still cook a little a little faster directly over the heat. Uh, but much better much better than with the grate not there. Um, it can also be good for um, to have uh, for an emergency when if the power goes out. So if you live somewhere where power outages are common, or even if it's not common, but you just want to have something just in case, uh, this is a good thing to have. Or if you just want to cook outside and you don't want the heat in the house or the smell in the house, uh, it's not a good way to just cook outside. We're about ready to take the uh, meat off, so Dante, go ahead and hold that. Mysterious hand. Mysterious hand. Alright. Oh my goodness, oh, those very look ready. Yeah, that almost grills better than our propane stove. And just like that. Right, so a little bit smoky. You're close to the grill, but uh, you know, as long as you can stay back a little bit, it's not too bad. So here's the finished product. It's our breakfast sausage for dinner. And if you enjoyed this video, which we hope you did, uh, keep watching for more videos. We may do more rocket stove videos on different kinds of rocket stoves or different things you can cook on rocket stoves. And some of them may even be portable, so you can take them camping. And we'll do a comparison and a contrast and pros and cons of various ones. So again, we hope you enjoyed this video and have a good night.